Hey, what's going on everyone? Welcome back to the channel. It's that time of week again. Everybody's favorite segment, the MLB Power Rankings. We are now about three, three and a half weeks into June. Pretty much the mid point of the season and things are starting to really shape up. We had a pretty interesting week and normally we have a lot of these top teams in here that pretty much win week after week, but we had a lot of teams in the top five have a losing week, which is kind of outside the ordinary here on this channel. At least it's been like that for the past few weeks. Number one has a shake up. The bottom row stayed pretty much the same, um, but we're going to jump into it. We're going to go through all 30 teams, do a quick summary of how each team did this week and kind of me talk about why I have them in each spot. Some teams are just drastically falling while other teams are going up. Before I jump in, please, if you haven't yet subscribed to the channel, I ask every week because if I don't, you guys don't hit it. So I appreciate you guys hitting it. Join the community. We have a Discord. We continue to talk on there. And I do videos, power rankings every week and other videos throughout the season that are a lot of fun. We also do football when it's football season. But with that, without further ado, we're going to jump into it. Number 30, just going to stay the same. One and two against Houston. One and two against Detroit. The White Sox always seem to find themselves in the stories of the MLB of just some crazy plays. I think this seat this week uh, we saw a couple days ago them end a game two outs in the down by one in the ninth and they bases stealing error running around the bases with one out pop fly guy runs as if it was two outs that ends up the game so it's just like the White Sox continue to be that story throughout MLB I don't think this is going to change unless somehow they go on a run I don't see that happening and what these other teams are not so great themselves this team, though, Miami Marlins, did have a winning week. And they played two teams that are in the top half of this league. 2-1 and one against St. Louis, 2-1 and one against Seattle. But for me, I talk about it every week because every week it seems to be a story. They get shut out at least once. And I believe there was a 9-0 or 8-0 game this weekend. And Marlins just find a way to always get shut out. So for me, that does give them a little bit of a knock. You don't want to be a team not putting up runs. There are times they put up runs, and this week is kind of that story they did put up four wins so a little bit of excitement maybe we're gonna start seeing them make a contest i do talk about how this is probably the lowest they'll be because they do have a lot of injuries they're dealing with next up oakland two and one against kansas city and then one and two against minnesota this game just ended i always do these videos before this sunday nighter we have the mets and the cubs playing tonight that's gonna be exciting but the a's like a 500 week and it's not too bad they're playing the al central this week against the teams that are on the upper half as well so we had two winning situations here and it's kind of a reversal week because it felt like the bottom row didn't have the disastrous week that we sometimes see them usually do two and four is pretty much typical if you're in the bottom row but that does not seem to be the case number 27 i'm going to keep them there out of the two, all the teams on this board that did have the worst week, they went one and three against the Dodgers, and then they went one and two against Washington. And it was a homestand, seven games at home, two and five. We see the offense always popping off in cores, and there was no difference this week. But at the same time, the pitching for Colorado just isn't there. And I don't know if I've ever really have these pitchers come out of Colorado and be like, that's the ace, that's the guy that shuts it down in cores. It just doesn't seem to happen. So I don't put a lot of weight when a core is popping off and things like that. At the end of the day, I do believe Colorado is going to beat these teams and heads up. There are situations we have seen them play a couple of these teams and maybe that wasn't the case. But I think as we go on, they have some guys coming back from injury. They are at number 27. I guess it's not anything to get. You don't want to get in too much of a debate. 27, 28. Who really cares? Number 26. The Angels are sticking in this spot. 1-2 and two against Milwaukee, and then 1-1 one and one against the Dodgers. I guess the big surprise for me this week was that the Dodgers and the Angels didn't play on Sunday. I was talking about how every team plays on Sunday to my wife today, and then I find out that these guys aren't playing, and it just kind of blew my mind. Like, why are teams not playing on Sunday? If there's a reason, somebody knows what happened there, let me know uh, in the comments below. Otherwise, Angels, a five-game week. Couldn't move them up. They seem to be somewhat going for 5-5 five and five over their last 10 they play competitively, but when we start getting the number 25 and up, it's really hard for me to say, hey, the Angels are going to be that team that can compete. But the one team I do think they are making some ground on, number 25. And number 25 has been that slot all season. 
has kind of changed. We've seen a lot of different teams in that slot. It's always been the National League, which to me is kind of interesting. When we look at standings individually, maybe the Giants aren't necessarily the sixth worst, te worst team in the league when it comes to standings. But when we start getting in-depth into the numbers, I start to get really worried about their offense. Whether they're going to compete in this division, they have three teams that are, in my opinion, much stronger than them. And they're starting to fall a little bit down. And this week was a big statement for kind of knocking them down into this bottom row. They went one and two against the Cubs, a team that they were that was in this spot not too long ago. I think two weeks ago they held this spot for three weeks. And the Cubs were only right here last week. So it's been a little bit of competitiveness there. And then they went 0-3 against the Cardinals. And the Central has been quite a competitive division in this National League. For them to go 1-5 and five against that division, it's a division that is kind of ranked relatively low on this board. And you're going to see that in the next couple of spots here. Number 24, just talking about them, how they went 2-1 and one against the Giants. The, the, the star pitcher on there, Amagata, I'm, gonna, I'm saying that wrong, I know, sorry. Um, he got blown up this week, and now it's the second time he's been blown up in the past couple of weeks. And his ERA is still doing very well. I just hope he can bounce back from that. But other than that bright star, for them, the, the Cubs have been really struggling. Probably one of the worst records in the MLB over the past month, month and a half. They did bounce back this week. Only a five-game week. The Mets, they've only gone one and one in their last game against the Mets. They did get blown out. So can they keep it going? The Sunday night game tonight is kind of a matchup of two teams, in my opinion, that are going in completely opposite directions. The Cubs trying to turn their course. They were as high as the second top row for a long time before they started falling. And the rest of this National League Central is very tight. They got their own Cincinnati Reds right ahead of them. One and two against Pittsburgh, and then one and two against Boston over the weekend. So the Reds continue to have this just like completely sub 500 season. There are things that are working for them. The offense works at times. The pitching staff has been pretty electric from what I've seen. And it's a little bit of a surprise that some of these young pitchers are starting to come up for the Reds, but when they're losing to the Pirates, they're losing to Boston, teams that if you want to be in the playoff, you got to start winning. It's not happening, and the losing streaks in the last 10 and the last 20 just not adding up to being a good season. They got a lot of teams to pass if they're going to get back into that wild card race. Number 22, a little bit of a edge this week, having beaten the Cincinnati Reds, it got a little bit there, but then they play Tampa Bay, a team that has been floating in this exact spot all past couple of months, maybe not all season, but feels like all season now. At least two months, Tampa Bay's been floating in this area, and the Pirates fall short there. And instead of bolstering a winning week against two teams that are as low in this board to push themselves towards the playoffs, they had Paul Skeens going twice this week, and they only have a 500 week. That is concerning for the Pirates of in a competition like this. This playoff race is so tight. You gotta really pick up the wins when you're playing these weaker teams. It's so thick. It's, it's just getting absolutely wild. Number 21, maybe arguably should have this team absolutely lower. And it's like it's like I curse this team sometimes. I moved them up last week. They got up to number 18 last week. And then they go 0-6 this week and swept by Boston. The first series they played against Boston this week and swept by the Cleveland Guardians. A rematch from the weekend before where they actually won that series. Um, but it's been a pretty disastrous week. For the Toronto Blue Jays. On top of all of that, their number one batting prospect, Martinez, gets an 80-game suspension after making his debut on Friday. So just complete setbacks. The offense continues to fall up short. And then this week was a little bit of a different story. The offense wasn't, like, absolutely terrible. But then we see Barrios, Gosman, those guys give up a lot of home runs. And just not good. It seems like Toronto is edging down. And, like, while well, other teams are getting better, gearing up for playoffs, Number one prospect for the Jays is out. And now if you start looking at the top 100 MLB prospects, the Jays don't really have anyone left. So it's a lot of concern for the Jays here. As well as their future, I'd be quite concerned with how that's going to look for them. Number 20, staying in that same division, I do have the Tampa Bay Rays. They made a little bit of segue this week, beating the Pirates, of course. Then they also beat the Minnesota Twins earlier in the week. So it was a winning week for the Rays. And this is probably feels like First winning week in quite some time. First week where the Rays are starting to get a little bit of momentum. 
So I'm not going to put a whole lot of credit into it yet. Whether they can build off it, it's great. They're beating up on these teams below them, kind of cementing themselves in the top 20 in the MLB. Not a bad place to be. The division, on the other hand, is very much out of reach for both of these teams. I don't think there's a question about that. But at the end of the day, wild card is not super far away. Going on a big enough winning streak, and you're going to be right in there. But you're going to have to start beating these teams that are above you. Number 19, moving up a couple of spots. They went 1-2 and two against the Mets. Didn't hold too much against it. I think this was kind of a wake-up call, what felt like, for them. Because the Mets were one of those teams that's like, they've become the hottest team across the MLB ever since Grimace threw at that first pitch. If you don't know about that, check that out. But Texas, a little bit of a run here on the weekend, beating up three games to zero on Kansas City. This might be the turning point. We're seeing Max Scherzer come back, possibly, and this team might get some momentum behind them. Don't count them out. X-World Series champs, you got to know they know how to win. Whether the rest of the, some of these guys that have struggling starts so far can start to get some momentum, help build this team back into the team they are. The one thing going for them, there are a few games under 500 now. The rest of the division hasn't really walked away with it. The leader of this division, Seattle, hasn't got as much wins as pretty much every other division in baseball. So that is working out for them. You're going to have a lot of games against those Houstons, against those um, Seattles as well. And you do have the Angels and the A's that are going to help you at least make up some ground in the wild card if you play your cards right. Texas, hopefully on their way up, hit rock bottom, hopefully. Number 18 did give them a little bit of a boost this week. Probably the biggest one on the board. Maybe I was a little bit slow to react because they've been one of the hottest teams now for the past number of weeks. 2-1 and one earlier in the week against Texas and then 1-1 one and one against the Cubs so far. But their offense seems to have woken up. It's like some something happened on this team. Forget the name of the pitcher that threw his cap or whatever and then said that in the interview after the game that bad teammates and all. I forget. I'm screwing it up. But ever since that moment... The Mets just seem to have a, a fire under them, and they're on their way. They're very much in that wild card talk now, and for them to be able to capitalize now too with Atlanta having that little bit of a struggle, we're not going to see them probably get up to the very top of this board, but getting up here is when we're going to start talking about them being in the playoffs, and they're not too far away, so big kudos to the Mets. They're very much back in it. Number 17, I do have the Washington Nationals. A 500 week for them. Can't be super excited with how it went for them. They played two National League West teams. Arizona, they lost that series two games to one. And then they go into Coors, and they do win it two to one. And they barely squeak, squeak by for the rubber match today. And the Nationals, I wanted to see a little bit more this week. A 500 week against two teams that one's poor and one's like fighting for playoff spots with them. They are a couple of games away from 500 coming into the season. I don't think I expected that. CJ Abrams having an amazing year and... I was looking at some stats for him over his last 182 games. The guy has been lights out for the Nationals. Big impact player. Been a surprise. Washington continues to pluck along here. But now we got a hot Mets team that's in that division one that they had created a little bit of a gap between. But now it's super tight here. It's going to be interesting. One of these teams is going to have to start falling. And we'll see who it is. Number 16. This is starting to get a thick National League. Arizona 2-1 and one against Washington. 1-2 against Philly. So they did have their rematch against Philly over the weekend. That NLCS from last year, of course. And they fell short. A little 500 week. And it seems like the same story every week for Arizona. That they've been floating in this middle of the pack. A little bit lower than middle. But all season long. It's been a couple of weeks. And they've been in the same area. But I think that's a good thing for Arizona. They've been dealing with so many pitching injuries. And that has always been one of their biggest capital assets as a team in this division, in this National League. It's been their biggest asset. And the fact that they have three or four of their main guys on the DL at a time, it seems like. The fact that they're in 500 in the playoff race, I think that's a big win for them. We could see them moving up as they start to get people back together. Number 15, <clears throat> had thought about moving them way down after a one and two series against Philadelphia. Just thought some of these other teams were starting to make headway. We saw the Mets sweep them last week. We saw them struggle with some of these other teams along the way as well. But then they play a top team like Milwaukee, and they go three games to one. And it just reminds me that San Diego Padres are like forever 500 this season. So what better spot to put them than the exact middle of the board at 15? They just 
have no consistency whatsoever. So the only thing I'm going to consistently do is put them in the middle at this point until they really prove to me that they're absolutely terrible enough to be further down the board or they finally go on some sort of a run here and move themselves up the board. Otherwise, they're going to be smack dab in the middle what seems like for the rest of the season. Number 14, we got Detroit Tigers. 0-3 against Atlanta and 2-1 and against the White Sox. So they're beating up the White Sox. That's good. They're at least taking care of that business. And to go 0-3 against Atlanta, it was an opportunity in my books for them to maybe pick up a series win against a team that is ahead of them on the board. Would have potentially been able to boost them up into a little bit more favorable contention. Instead, they're kind of struggling with these other teams in this board. Like these other teams are going to be chasing them down this next week. is going to be super important with how that goes. But to go 0-3 against Atlanta, it might have been one of those series where Atlanta just got the boost it needed and they're starting to go on a run. So I'm not going to hold too much against them. I want to see how the next couple of weeks goes. Detroit has been faltering uh, over the past couple of weeks. The one bonus for them is that this other team in their division has also been faltering. The one team that they are potentially chasing 1-2 and two against Oakland, 0-3 oh over the weekend here against uh, Texas. So Royals just... After such a fiery start in April, halfway through May, things have definitely slowed down. They slowed down for a while. Now they are starting to go downhill. It's going to be how they react this next week or two before the All-Star break. Can they stop the bleeding? Because now that they're back into the middle of the pack here, we have a lot of teams that are hungry. And when these teams are hungry, they smell blood in the water. They're going to start attacking. So Kansas City did do themselves a favor and pick up some wins against some of the tougher teams earlier on. But now it's time to really, let's let's fix the boat. Like there's a hole in the boat. Let's stop it from sinking. Kansas City, keep your eye on that. Number 12, I do have the Houston Astros and they had a pretty massive week, honestly. Two and one against the White Sox, sweeping Baltimore over this weekend. I think I only moved them up one spot after going five and one. And that's because if you compared my power rankings pretty much to anyone else's, I had Houston higher probably for a lot longer. I think Houston has been 13, 14, at least for a number of weeks now. And then to me, this week was just a statement week that kind of cemented that my opinion and what I thought and what I saw in Houston was pretty accurate. I wasn't ready to really commit. They're still below 500 after all. I'm not ready to really commit and move them way up the board because I do think the 11 teams ahead of them have performed better, have been more consistent. But Houston is starting to be like, all right, it's time, guys, it's time. And some of the falters and errors that were they were dealing with at the beginning of the season, they seem to be patching up very well. Number 11, we have the St. Louis Cardinals, 1-2 and two against Miami, and then 3-0 oh against San Fran. So they had two teams in the bottom row this week. They went 4-2, and two, like not ideal, but a winning week against the bottom row. Not going to hold it against them at all whatsoever. They're doing what a winning team does. They're winning. So the fact that they lost to Miami, a little bit of concern. But, like, of course, when you're in a three-game series, anyone can win on any given day. It's professional baseball after all. These bottom teams are still going to win series time and time again. So I'm not too much against St. Louis in that situation. At the same time, the rest of these central teams are continuing to struggle. And they're putting up wins. So they're catching up a gap Well, the team ahead of them starting to struggle a bit too. I didn't think that it was possible for them to catch up in this division, but it seems more and more possible with each passing week. Next up, I have the Boston Red Sox 3-0 against Toronto, 2-1 against Cincy. I don't know really what else to say, but Boston continues to play pretty great baseball. I think surprising to almost everybody at the beginning of the season, this team is a top 10 team right now. Arguably could be even higher. The fact they beat up on the Jays really accelerating them out into this top 10 and then against Cincinnati winning that series as well pretty exciting there so the offense has been popping the pitching has been pretty good as well at times um, and they pretty much were fire, firing on all cylinders this week of five in one week pretty exciting number nine they stopped the week. It was a great week for Atlanta, and they kind of put me to bed. I think I might have done a reverse curse on them when I did the playoff prediction video a couple of weeks ago when I actually predicted Atlanta not making the playoffs, and they've gone, I think they've lost like three games since then. So this week they went 3-0 and against Detroit. Over the weekend here they're playing the Yankees. They go 2-1. and So the offense is finding new ways to win, and Jared Kalanick has been a big part of that. 
who really would have thought that him batting the leadoff for the Braves would have been a thing when this season started, but it seems to be working. The pitching continues to kind of deliver for these guys, and Chris Sale is having a Cy Young kind of season. I guess we shouldn't be surprised to hear the name Chris Sale and Cy Young in the same number. But number nine, they didn't really move up, but at the same time, they stopped their fall and kind of reversed course. So it feels like the momentum is going this way. Just keep playing this way, and I think they're going to start making up some more ground. Maybe get back into that top row. Next up, we have Minnesota. One and two against Tampa. Two and one against Oakland. No movement for Minnesota this week. 500 week, which is kind of good, maybe, for a team that's been super streaky over the past month, two months or so. Just a little bit of a level playing field. Wasn't the greatest showing a 500 week against the likes of Tampa and Oakland isn't really what you want to see for a five, top 10 team. Not going to move them with one week. I want to see some division matchups for Minnesota. It's been a little bit here and there uh, over the past weeks for them and whether they can get that offense continuing to build off that and beat up on these two teams that are trying to catch up to them. I want to see that. So Minnesota, it's one of those wait and see weeks for them. Um, but we got some hungry teams right behind them. Um, so any more faltering, 500 is not going to be good enough to stay in number eight spot. So you got to get a little bit ahead of that. Number seven, had a little bit of a debate in the comments section last week about whether this team should be number seven or higher. I was on the fence of moving them up to number six last week and ended up not doing it. And I feel justified based on how the week went this week. One and two against Cleveland, one and two against Miami. So Cleveland was number six last week, and that was where the debate was. So when that happens, I'm kind of looking ahead, seeing these two teams playing, and I have to predict who's going to win. And I chose to go on Cleveland's side with that one. They ended up coming through with me. And then to fall for Miami, a little bit of a struggle. So it was a down week for Seattle. Um, but the fact that they were on the verge of breaking into this top row the week before, not going to hold it all against them. Losing weeks are going to happen, especially even in the top row. We're going to get to it. A lot of them had losing weeks, so that does happen. But same story as Minnesota. We got hungry winning teams in the bottom 12 here, and they're ready. So these two teams seem to be holding on to the 7-8 spot. Those are up for grabs, whereas maybe number 6 is a little bit up for grabs too. But uh, it's a little more farther to get into that top row. So number 6, Milwaukee, 2-1 and one against the Angels, and then 1-3 against the Padres. They continue to win for the most part. Angels, they beat them. I want to see sweeps. I want to see more sweeps out of this Minnesota Milwaukee team. They just don't ever seem to pull the trigger. A lot of 2 1 series wins, and it may catch up to them in the future. And then they go 1 and 3 against San, San Diego, who had been over their last 10 before this weekend. Probably been 3 and 7 ish, it feels like. I'm not sure, 100% certain about that. Milwaukee, they've been a staple in this top row now for a over a month, maybe six weeks or so, but they're now the most vulnerable team in this top row when we're starting to look at the grand scheme of things. Number five, we do have the LA Dodgers. 3-1 against the Rockies, so a big, massive series against the Rockies. The one hurtful thing that really has me worried about the Dodgers is, of course, Mookie Betts fracturing his hand. He's at least out for a number of weeks. And with the MVP out on your team and for the bottom half of this roster had not been delivering for a long time, I do have some concerns. But we're going to talk about it. Almost every team in this top row does have concerns. So it's not like there's a lack of it. The Dodgers do beat up on Colorado. They manage to beat up on these low teams pretty significantly. So as long as they keep that going, they're going to stay above 600. They're very likely going to be in this top five. Between five and six, I do believe, is one of the biggest gaps when we're talking about a board here. Uh, maybe... Yeah, that's probably one of the biggest gaps. Number four, dropping a few spots here. We got New York Yankees. One and two against Baltimore. One and two against Atlanta. They had held on to this number one spot for a while, but the past three weeks now, it's been sub 500-ish for the New York Yankees, especially this week, playing against a team, Atlanta, that figured out how to get fired up after winning that series against uh, Detroit. So Atlanta figures it out, and then they top up on that and beat up on the Yankees and the Yankees had that matchup with the Baltimore Orioles everyone was hyped coming into this week about how that was going to go and they fall in that series after winning the first game of that series thought they were like okay they're going to finally walk away with this division lucky for them Baltimore had a bad weekend and they do still hold on to that top spot in division 
Number three, I do have the Baltimore Orioles. After that Yankees series, I don't think there was any debate that this team was number one. Of course, there's tons of concerns about a number one team, and you don't really want to have these concerns while they are number one, the pitching and the rotation. So many injuries, and it seems like after this weekend getting swept by the Houston Astros, that maybe it's catching up with them. I've talked about it for a number of weeks now, and that the bullpen has always concerned me with the Baltimore Orioles. The bats have, on the other hand, have managed to bat their way out of it time and time again. Don't know the exact number, but we're up to the 20s, right, of how many games in a row that they've hit at least a home run. So this offense is not a question of how the, the, the offense is going to carry them to massive wins. It's the pitching that is starting to concern me. And after watching this weekend, I don't think I can put them at number one. I think number three is more than justified. That brings us to number two. And this is absolutely, for some of you guys, not a surprise. Uh, for me, it absolutely is a surprise. It's the highest they've ever been on this board. And some of you guys have been telling me that this team has been underrated all season long by me. And it's taken me up until now to be like, wow. Took me a while to get them into the top row, let alone into the second row. I had them in the middle of the league for at least the first month, maybe, of this power rankings, and I, it was probably the number one comment coming into these power ranking videos, is, why is Cleveland so low? You got Cleveland wrong. Blah, 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 Cleveland. And finally, after I've seen them play six games now, of course, being a Jays fan, I got to see them more up close, because I watched the Jays a little bit more closely than the rest of the teams. I saw it in action, um, watched them, got to know a lot of their players more in depth, saw their rotation. The rotation still isn't I'm not super confident in it, but right now when I'm matching them up to Baltimore's rotation, I'd rather take Cleveland's based on injuries and stuff. And then the bats just seem to deliver for Cleveland time and time again. We have a lot of guys like Stephen Kwan at the top of that order who just slaps the ball into play over and over again. Jose Ramirez have an MVP kind of season. The Guardians bullpen is a lot more sound than the rest of the Orioles as well. So that's kind of where the edge is right now. I know, think overall the Guardians are only a game or so behind these guys as well in the standings. But on paper, I think the Guardians are starting to walk away a little bit with this division. Do you think it's more in their graphs as well? Number one, had to give it to them, the Philadelphia Phillies. They are back on top of this board. And I think they deserved it. 2-1 and one against the Padres, 2-1 and one against Arizona. Not like an amazing week or anything, but a winning week. We see Wheeler continue to dominate on this team. He had a great outing, was it today or yesterday? A great outing for them. The bats on this team, they're probably one of the most in-depth, one through nine bats in the entire league. So um, I don't think there's too much concern there. Um, but guys, arguably, you could argue... I wouldn't, I wouldn't say no, that the Guardians could potentially be on number one. I want to see one more week of the Guardians. I don't know who they play this week. I feel like there is division matchups. I can't remember. I'm trying to keep an eye on all of these teams, and sometimes it's very hard to see what's going on for the every teams. And that's why I count on you guys, the guys that make it to the very end. Leave something in the comment. Let me know where I'm missing on this board. Is there something very key of note, some stats, some exciting news, some stuff that you're pumped about? But any of these teams, I love just hearing about all their teams. And that's why the Discord community is so awesome. It's dominated by Baltimore Orioles fans. I love you guys, but it is a lot of Orioles fans. I want to hear from other teams. I love hearing about all the sports and all that stuff. So if you made it this far, thanks for watching. Let me know what you guys think in those comments below. And we will see you for that next video.